All right, hi, you're 11. This is Mr. Lim here again, and today we're going to be talking about uh, ionic formulas and electron dot diagrams, which is the sixth video in our uh, chemical bonding series. <clears throat> okay, so ionic bonding, we've already done a lot of uh, the properties of ionic bonding. Now we're going to have a look at the ionic formula. Okay, so, um, so we know that in e ionic substances, uh, they transfer electrons. And so they give, one uh, atom gives and one atom takes electrons. The metals give and the non-metals takes because of their difference in electronegativities. All right. They give and take certain amounts per atom. Okay. So one might give uh, three, the other one might take two. Okay. But the most important thing to understand is that the amount given uh, the number of electrons given and taken must be equal. So you can't have an atom that gives away three and an atom that takes two and then have those combined together in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, what we need, what you have is a different ratio of atoms so that they have equal numbers of electrons given and taken, right? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So let's have a look here. Ionic formulas. Okay, so ionic formula shows the ratio of positive and negative ions in all substances, uh, in ionic substances, sorry. And then the ionic formula is then worked out by balancing the numbers of electrons lost by the metal and the number of electrons gained by the non-metal, uh, which is the negative ion. All right, so that's how we work out the formula uh, that we write down, which shows the ratio by working out by and by balancing the number of electrons lost and gained with each other so that uh, we get the right ratio of atoms to each other. So to make them balance, first of all, you take the magnitude of two charges. So how big are the two charges? You find the lowest common multiple of those two uh, charges. And then you multiply out each charge to get the lowest common multiple of them. And then you use those numbers uh, to uh, work out the ionic formula and the ratio of atoms. Okay. Once you've worked out how many positive uh, and negative ions you have, you can show them by subscripts. So that's the um, the ratio of positive and negative ions by subscripts on the bottom right of each individual ion. And then if you have to, if you have a polyatomic ion, which is an ion that's made up of more than one atom, you put brackets around it to show that the subscripts are attached uh, and that so that the subscript multiplies all values inside those brackets. Okay, and we'll show you what that means in a second. So let's have a look. Here we have a number of ionic substances. Okay, so we have lithium oxide, aluminium chloride, blah, 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 these ones here. All right, so hopefully you've memorized the um, ion table. All right, and so you should know that lithium oxide is combined of lithium one plus ions and oxide two minus ions. Okay, so... We've got our uh, two ions here, and hopefully you've memorized them. Um, or you can watch the video about how ions are formed and work out how to get those values. The idea is that our magnitude of charge for the lithium is 1, and the magnitude of charge for the oxide is 2. Okay. We then find the lowest common multiple of 1 and 2, which happens to be 2. Okay. So to multiply, to get the lithium ratio, you have to take the uh, magnitude of the charge and multiply it by a certain number to get to the lowest common multiple. So what number multiplies by 1 to get to 2? It's 2. Okay, so we do a times 2. And then the lowest common multiple, uh, or, sorry, the multiplier for 2 to get to 2 is just times by 1. Okay, and that's how many you need. So you need two lithiums and two oxygens. Oh, sorry, one oxygen. So... The idea, I like to draw it out. Lithium gives away one electron, and oxygen takes in two electrons. Okay? For that to work, I need to make sure that lithium, there are two of them, so that there are two electrons transferring across and two electrons being uh, accepted. So ultimately, I, need, I know I need to have two lithiums and one oxygen, so my uh, formula will be Li, and then I use a subscript in the bottom right-hand corner, two for that one there, and then O there for lithium oxide. All right, so that's what it would look like, Li2O. Okay, let's do the next one, aluminium chloride. Okay, so hopefully we remember the formula, of the ionic, um, the ion charge for aluminium, which happens to be Al3+, and the one for chloride, which is Cl-. 
So again, the magnitude of charge is 3 and 1. Then I find the lowest common multiple, which happens to be 3. I have to times this one by 1 and times this one by 3 to get there. So I need 3 chlorines and 1 aluminium. So I go A, L, C, L, 3. So I don't need to put a 1 in. You don't put, uh, when you have to multiply something by 1, you don't have to put any subscript in. Right, so that's A, L, C, L, 3. Let's try something else. Okay, let's try calcium sulfide. Ca, 2 plus, S, 2 minus. Okay, magnitude of charge, 2 is 2. What's the lowest common multiple? 2. I can go what? Times 2, sorry, times 1, times 1. So I only need one of each. So I have calcium sulfide, like that. Okay. Um, no subscripts needed because you're timesing both by 1. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Ammonium sulfate. So this is our first of our polyatomic ions. So they're multiple atoms that make up an ion. So let's have a think. I can still work out the magnitude of charge, one and two. So let's have a look here. Notice that this is at the bottom. Notice that this is at the top. So what that means is that that's not an NH with a four positive. It's an N with four H's and a single positive charge. Okay, so the one at the the number at the bottom represents the number of atoms of the atom before it, and then the charge at the top shows you uh, what charge it is. Okay, so the SO four two minus is not as if it's forty two minus; it's four oxygens and it's a two minus overall charge. All right. So lowest common multiple of one and two is two. All right, and so therefore I have to times that one by two and times that one by one, so I end up with two NH fours and one SO4. And the idea is that there's, here are your brackets, there's your subscript on the outside of the brackets to show that everything inside the brackets is times by two, and then SO4 on the, out, on the other side. Okay, let's try another one. Sodium phosphate. Hopefully we know that sodium is one plus. Phosphate is PO4 three minus, okay. Magnitude 1, magnitude 3, lowest common multiple 3, right? And then I just times that one by 3, times that one by 1. So therefore I get a ratio of Na3PO4. Okay. Um, these are all kind of easy. I should, I should have picked a harder one. Let's do put a harder one in now. Okay. Let's do aluminium oxide. Okay. Aluminium Oxide, okay, oops, Al3 plus O2 minus, okay, what's the common, lowest common multiple here? So it's magnitude 3, magnitude 2, lowest common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. That means you have to multiply this one by 2 and this one by 3. So therefore I have Al2, O3, okay. Let's do another one. Let's do lead. Oops. Let's do lead for uh, sulfate. Now let's do lead for hydrogen phosphate. Okay. So let's have a look here. Uh, let's get rid of this. All gone. Okay, Okay. lead 4 hydrogen phosphate, so lead, okay, that is Roman numerals for 4, and that is the um, charge that it has, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Hydrogen phosphate is HPO4 2 minus, okay, that means a magnitude of 4, means a magnitude of 2. What's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 2? 4 times that one by 1, times that one by 2, and so therefore I have PB bracket HPO4 bracket 2 lead uh, hydrogen phosphate or lead 4 hydrogen phosphate okay and then finally the copper carbonate okay copper carbonate it is Cu2 plus because here's the Roman numeral for 2 the carbonate is CO3 2 minus magnitude 2 magnitude 2 lowest common multiple 2 times it by 1 there times it 1 by 1 there and then you have copper carbonate. Okay, so notice that you don't always put in brackets for 
polyatomic ions. Sometimes if it's just multiplied by one, you don't put in brackets. Okay, let's move on. Um, so ionic substances names. The name of ionic substances is taken from the names which you should memorize of the ions. Some rules you can have a read there. Uh, don't forget the Roman numerals, and it's generally the metals in the transition uh, metal range. Right. And there doesn't need to be a reference to the number of each ion, so you don't have to say that like there's a dioxide or something like that um, for to represent two oxygens, because you should be able to work it out from the charge of the ions. Okay, so let's have a look here. NaCl, sodium, from both uh, Na and chloride. So I took the chlorine and changed it to chloride. This is iron, sulfate. However, we need to think about this iron because it's a transition metal, what charge is it? So I know that sulfate is two minus, and I know that there's a one to one ratio for the ions, which means that the lowest common multiple for this one had to be two, because it's two times the one, right? So therefore the iron must also have a two plus charge. So this is iron two sulfate, All right? PBCO32, okay, so this is lead of some sort, carbonate, again, lead not being in transition state, but it has does have multiple possible charges uh, because the carbonate is a 2 minus, and it's a times by 2, okay, it's times by 2 because you've got the 2 as a subscript there, oh, I should get rid of this part then, that means I don't know what the lead is, Right, but I do know that it adds only times by one. These two here, the times two and the negative two means that the lowest common multiple is four. And if it's four times one, this one has to be a positive four. Okay, so it's PB or lead for carbonate. Okay, and something really cool is that you can actually work out what the charges of that X, just like we worked out the charges of the iron and the carbonate, even though we don't know what the substance is. The PO4, we know is a three minus. So the magnitude is 3, and we know that it was multiplied by 2 because we've got the subscript there. That means the lowest common multiple is 6, okay? If the lowest common multiple is 6, but we know that there are times 3 of these x particles, that means that the charge must be 2, and therefore we can work it out that it's 2 plus. So this is x2 plus uh, phosphate of some sort. Okay, let's have a look at... The last slide, ionic substances, electron dot diagram. So ions and ionic substances can be represented by electron dot diagrams, which show the distribution of the outermost electrons, okay, amongst the ions. So effectively, you're seeing what's the last uh, level of uh, energy level and what electrons are in those. Okay, so each ion is shown in square brackets because square brackets show that things are charged. So... Um, we have positive and negative ions, and that's what we need to show. But positive ions, they have no electrons in their outermost energy level because they were all given away to the uh, non-metals. Okay? So therefore, they show no electrons. They only show the charge. Negative ions, however, right? they have a full p orbital, which generally means that they have eight electrons in their outer shell. Okay? So 4p orbital uh, leads to 8 electrons in their outer shell because you've got the full p and the full s orbitals. Those 8 electrons will come from different sources, and so therefore you should ideally use different symbols to represent that. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. Um, I've got sodium oxide there. So what you would write here in the ionic dot diagram is that you've got to show the sodium ion. That's the Na, and it's a positive 1 because you remember what Na is from... Um, the table, and we need to remember that since it's a positive ion, it's given away all its outermost electrons, so there are none around it. The oxygen, on the other hand, is minus two charge, and it brought six of its own, and it brought uh, two from the sodiums. Okay, now you also have to show that there is a subscript for the Na somewhere in this diagram, okay, showing that there's two Na's. You can show that as a coefficient or the number before that ion at the front. Okay, so that's how you would show uh, sodium oxide. Okay, let's try another one. 
lithium nitrate. Again, the positive ion doesn't get any um, electrons. It just shows the charge. And the nitrate, or sorry, the nitride has five of its own and then three ones that are from the lithiums. And that's just three minus. And then I would have to show that coefficient there. And then finally, you can see the AlCl3. The Al has no electrons around it, but it's a three plus. And the Cl minus has seven of its own and one that is from the aluminium, and it's a one minus, and there are three of them because of that subscript there. Okay, so that's how you um, write ionic formulas, work out what they are, and draw elect ionic electron diagrams. All right, adios.